Awesome. All right, so, hey, we've got a pretty decent crowd here tonight. Uh, let's find out where everybody's from. Where y'all from? Paris. Paris, Texas. Sulphur Springs, Texas. Emory. Emory, Texas. Kilgore, Texas. Van. Van, Texas. Flower Mound. Flower Mound, Texas. We're getting a little bit farther. Irving. Irving, Texas. Alabama, Texas. Oh, Alabama. <laughs> where is that? Alabama. Alabama. Oh, Alabama, Texas. Oh, I, was saying, I never heard Winsboro, of Alabama, Texas. Texas. That guy didn't like the content. <laughs> so, so, all right, hey, um, any questions for these guys up here tonight? What size line are you using out there on that drop shot? 12 pound. 12 pound. I use 12 pound, and I, and I do, uh, I've tested this left and right, left and right for years and to come up with the right scenario because uh, a lot of people will use braid on a spinning rod and I've already went through that and the problem is the braid will break a liter because uh, I'll either tie an FG knot if I'm using a braid on a spinner to go to a 12 pound fluorocarbon liter. Well, what I learned over time was, was that um, you break off a lot of the liters that way. So I've over time gravitated more to bait casters for the drop shot and I started using mono quite a long time ago because I want the stretch. Six to 12 line rated rods and the stretch is key. And more times than many when I have a problem with a big fish, I've caught it in one tournament here, uh, I caught an 1161 and uh, on 12 pound line and we won that tournament easily. And nice. the thing is, is that is that you want the stretch, but the drag has got to be set picture perfect because when one of those things runs real hard, and I've had two or three of them here in the last couple of years that run so hard, even with the drag set right, I lose them, and when I reel it in, they straighten the hook. The hook's mm. laid open completely. And so that is a problem that I've got to deal with, uh, you know, when I catch a really, really, really big fish. But I'll go down to a 35-pound swivel and then go to a... Uh, fluorocarbon leader and I get to adjust that anywhere I need based off watercolor based off conditions and based off the bite the tougher the bite the lighter the line I'm gonna go to Billy doesn't aspire to that at all and so there's times when I've got a 12 pound leader swivel eight uh, 35 pound spro it's a tiny tiny swivel and then eight pound leader on it and then you got to tie the right knots uh, I either tie a San Diego jam or an Aaron Martin's knot to the hook and then run run it back through and then set my distance between uh, the weight and the hook based off the depth that I'm in. One a couple of two or three tournaments here fishing up in two foot of water using a, a leader that long, literally three inches long with a quarter ounce weight throwing it up in shallow and why? Those tournaments I did win because there were brims spawning up there in that shallow water and I like to throw that more so than a, than a wacky worm or something like that because the bait is is wiggling a little bit more naturally it's like this because it's off the bottom so it looks a little bit more enticing and that's why I end up catching some really good good fish up shallow like that and with that being said in my experience it's really good to use salt free worms for that I, I mean it, it floats more yeah so it, I, 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 don't I test them in swimming pools yeah. I want to see how buoyant the baits are to see what they're going to look like because I darn sure don't want a bait that I put down there and then all of a sudden it's either standing straight up or mm -hmm. it's laying straight down. Right. So you have to know how the bait lays in order to determine is this the right thing? You know, I mean, am I, am I wasting my time or yeah. are we getting something out of this exercise? So <clears throat> the deeper the water I go, then the leader starts to lengthen. And uh, even when we're pitching docks, well, it doesn't matter whatever it is based off the depth the deeper we go the longer the leader will get until we're maybe out in 20 25 foot we're using a leader maybe that long now <clears throat> going back to the same question i asked cody earlier about how he's working the shaky head let me let me transition over to drop shot i know there's a couple of different ways you can work a drop shot you can sweep a drop shot or you can kind of try to keep your weight in one place and just kind of bounce the line and kind of jiggle the worm just a little bit what have you seen this week that might help some of these the, uh, tournament anglers? The number one problem my clients do whenever we're out on the water is they work it too fast. They just, they, they, they almost work, want to work it like a Carolina rig. They get to dragging that thing like 80 miles an hour. Oh, hold up there, Indy 500 winner. Uh, <clears throat> you got to slow down a little bit here and, and you want to, and we cast them. I mean, we'll, we'll make a long cast into, like if we're on a point or whatever the case, and work it kind of, you know, you're, you're just moving along real slow. Pause it, pause it, pause it. Just barely shake the rod tip because when you put that in a swim pool and you watch what happens when you just bounce the slack, that worm just jiggles around a little bit and it stays buoyant so it'll just hang right there 
and then you move it six inches towards you, shake it a little bit, pause it. The pauses most of the time will we'll get the bites. And there's been so many times when, when this is crazy, whenever you throw out there and a client catches a fish, and so you've got the rod in your hand. I don't want to set it down. I've already lost a rod doing that this year. And I go to get the net, and I'm messing with him. I net it. Next thing you know, I got one on. Why? Because it was dead sticked. Just sitting there doing nothing. That's awesome. Thank you for that, David. So fairly fa fair to say you're using more of the drag method, kind of the sweet method, but super, super slow. No, you, you pull it. You keep your rod tip up, up pretty high, and you shake it a little bit, and then you pick up slack about a foot, about a, you know, from the 12, 1130 to 1030, and then just move the bait, move it towards you about a foot or so, and you're, you're just going to just cover some water slowly. Shake it a little bit, pause it, you know, and I mean, it's a, each cast is not going to take, you know, I mean, it takes more than five minutes three minutes, four minutes. It's not gonna be a 30 second deal to get the bait back to cover water. That is not a search bait. Drop shot's not a search bait. It's yeah. something that you know those fish are there and most of the time at this time of the year, I'm going along on the graph and I'm video fishing those fish. I can see them down there, let that thing straight down there and looking at it, looking at it. Now if I had a live scope or something, ooh, it might be even better, you know, but then all of a sudden the thing just loads up. Yeah. <laughs> so we've heard a lot about you know what to do early in the morning top water stuff like that and then later in the day you go to shaky head naturally the drop shot master here probably go default, defaults to drop shot and you've even mentioned carolina rig several times is there is there a moving bait bite at all deep cranks chatter bait spinner bait uh something along those lines i i haven't used one myself yeah i haven't I, had to right i well like i said the only moving bait bite we've had is the under is the uh is a uh Skinny, Skinny dipper. dipper. Shallow. That's the only moving bait bite, and they will hit it. Absolutely. White trash. As much as I hate throwing crankbaits, and he can contest to that, um, I actually threw one this week on that road bed and mm -hmm. actually caught quite yeah. a few yeah. with that. Uh, it was, I think it was a, we were in eight foot of water, and I was throwing a, a 10 XD. Okay. And in eight foot, but grinding it? Grinding it down <laughs> that road bed. Just, just making a ditch. Yep. Yeah, that seems to be the king of crankbaits on fork. Yeah. If you ain't come in contact with the bottom or some sort of structure, you're not going to get bit. Yeah. So, That's awesome. You know, if there is any tips I can give y'all, you know, tonight before y'all go out and fish, y'all need to have a plan. Can't go out and fish tonight. Lake's off limits as of right now. <laughs> 30 minutes from now. Yeah. But have you a plan tonight. You know, I'm going to fish here, top water in the morning, and pick you four or five spots that you're going to go to after that. Because like Ogio said, there's going to be somebody on every spot. So you need to have four or five of them lined up to where you can go. And I want you to get that one and go to the other one. But have a plan and stick to it. Because I don't know how many times I've had plans and I get so frustrated and I didn't stick to it. And I should have. You know, at the end of the day, listen to everybody, I should have stuck with it. Well, yeah. it's, it's, it's funny you bring that up because my next question was going to be for both of you guys who, who have tournament fished out here a lot. My venture, I'm going to venture a guess that a lot of the people in this room don't get the on the water time during the week ahead of a tournament like this, unless they use vacation. All right. Me, I have not, I've literally not been on this body of water in two weeks. Right. So for me, I'm going to do a lot of map study tonight. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to listen to what these guys are saying and kind of put all the formulas together to, to, to try to locate certain spots that I want to hit where I think there may be some fish. Now, again, I don't have the time on the water like a lot of you guys, right? We work Monday through Friday, right? Um, real jobs. Real jobs is what, I, is what I'm saying. I mean, we're not guys. We're not professional fishermen like these two guys are. Um, so, lay out a plan for me. You know, if you were not a guide, if you were a guy like me, works Monday through Friday, both of you guys, you know, what would you be doing tonight? Would you be studying maps? Would you be calling friends? Would you be looking at online reports? You know, what do you think would be the, the, the number one key to, to like you mentioned, having a plan, okay? Let's talk about how do you make that plan right, so for a working guy? If you didn't, if you ain't had a chance to pre-fish, I, I trust some of my friends, but I wouldn't trust any of them if they're fishing the tournament. I, I would not ask them what they're throwing or where they're fishing. I'm just telling you that right now. Right. Um, but, you know, what, what worked for me, you know, a lot of times, the fish life app, okay? That, that is the most current update deal. But the bad thing about that fish life app this weekend is there's going to be so many people on it. But like me and Billy has talked before in the past, look at what he's got marked. And like he's talking about. Duplicated. Duplicated. 
look at that map and see what they're looking at, why that's marked, and duplicate it. And you know that that has always worked for me. But the only other thing I can offer you is just go fishing. Yeah. Bottom line is just you know listen. Everybody that watches this channel knows that I'm a a finesse weightless. I, that's my jam, right? So I'm not going to go out there and do something and and do something that I'm not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is, you've got to be comfortable in what you're doing. Now, if you're a if you're a you know a, a, a 200 a day a year fisherman, you're probably comfortable with more than two or three you know techniques. I'm not okay. I, I, there's two or three techniques that I'm really comfortable with. That's going to be my plan for this weekend, right? And and that's half the battle is is you know the first half is finding the fish you know figuring out what they're doing right by, by using your electronics the second half is okay i found these fish how am i comfortable catching these fish now you might have to get outside your comfort zone a little bit i'm not a big drop shot guy i do have a drop shot rigged up on my deck okay if i throw the fluke out there if i throw the wacky worm the, the carolina rig shaky head if i'm not getting bit but i know there's fish here i see fish on my graph I'm gonna throw the drop shot out there. I'm gonna throw the jig out there. I'm gonna do whatever. So you know that that's 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 what I think. You know that's that, that's my two cents, if yeah. you will. Be comfortable in what you're doing. For well, sure. the problem you're dealing with here this weekend is, is the fact that the cycle that I know right now is is <clears throat> is going shallow early, the first hour. Like I said, throwing a swim bait or throwing a little top water in order to try to strike a, a check in the first hour with uh, some you know some good under because it's not going to take a mammoth under the first hour of the tournament and then when the sun starts to break up a little bit then i'm going to back out in those areas on points and throw drop shot carolina rig or the shaky head one of those three in the eight foot to 15 foot window you know because the thing that i know is is that is that those deep fish that i'm catching are not there till after your tournament is over they are so, not there. so basically what you're seeing is that fish are up shallow right at daybreak and they're moving in cycles they'll move to that second level mid to they, late afternoon they just back and then boom, mid morning, they, they go mid deeper. morning they back out but i don't think those fish travel from eight foot to 25 foot i don't i don't just don't believe they stop around i don't 10, believe they do foot. that i think there's fish that live in those ranges and they stay there and a lot of those deep fish if they come out of the deep and here's the reason why I'm going to state that is that some of these fish were hooking and you, you get them on and they're headed back into 35 foot of water. They're going out. They're not going anywhere else. So when you're fighting that fish on this light line, they're headed back to, you know, uh, Nautilus territory mm -hmm. way out there. So those fish probably came from there up to a point to feed and at the time window that they'll feed and then they're going back out. So I think those fish live there. And then the, the mid-depth group, uh, a lot of those guys in a sardin tournament last weekend, a lot of those guys caught fish on, on, on a, uh, any one of those three things I named in that 8 to 15, 16 foot window. A lot of them did. And a 998 was bed fish, right? Mm -hmm. There was a, the big fish of the tournament was a bed fish. On a bed, still. 998. Wow, that's pretty yeah, awesome. I caught one today. Yeah, so I, there's still a certain nice. amount of them that are shallow. So last Saturday in that tournament, we there's a place that we normally will catch some good unders on a bed, and we made a pass in that pocket and looked, and I counted six or seven fish up there in water this deep, just swimming around. None of them were locked, but they were up there shallow, super shallow. So there'll be a, a ton of fish that will be shallow. There'll be a ton of fish that'll be in the mid-depth. And then... The, I just don't know that somebody will catch a big fish in 22 to deeper before one o'clock. I would be I would be hard pressed. I've tried and I haven't been having much luck doing that. Not until later in the day. So that kind of, that kind of goes back to what I'm saying, uh, what I was saying earlier, right? As both of these guys have said, there's going to be fish at all three all three levels. You're going to have fish shallow. You're going to have fish at mid range. And you're gonna have fish deeper, maybe the last hour of the tournament. Maybe you can go out there and hit a home run for the last weigh-in, right? So there should be something within those three ranges that you're comfortable with. Do what you're comfortable doing. Do what you have confidence in, and I think that's that that may play to your advantage. Yeah, and you can never go wrong, in my opinion, with fishing docks on this lake either. 
So last resort, plenty of fish on docks. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, all right. So any questions for our two guides here yes, tonight? Sir. Right here. Favorite color color on the uh, flukes. Favorite color on the fluke. Uh, my best color this week has been watermelon magic, and I have dipped. I have it. Dip, I've had one of them little yellow pins, and right there at the V, I just do each each tail, right there. Hmm. Interesting thing too. This week, we caught. Uh, a uh, client caught a five pounder and caught a six pounder <clears throat> and I net the fish and I'm, and I'm I lip him, I'm coming up and I've looked down there and, I, and this just happened two hours ago. And I'm looking in there and I go, well, well, well. I get the pliers out and go digging in there and I dig out a fluke, a watermelon fluke that still had the hook down there. He broke it off wow. with a watermelon fluke, on, probably on a Carolina rig. And then the other day, uh, two days ago, I dug one out that uh, it was a six pounder. I got good line. It wasn't my <laughs> six pounder, and I look in there going, no way. And I dug down there, and there was a hook in there, and he had on a creature bait I'd never seen before, and it'd been in there so long that it was milked out. Ooh. It was very milked out, so I saved the fish's life. That's a hungry fish. Yeah, and so I turned and got the hook out easily, you know, and then pull that big old thing out. It stunk too, mm -hmm. and uh, but I mean that that helped to save the fish. But it was a big creature bait. Also a Carolina river. Nice. Well, you fish the docks or what's the Well, I fish docks, me and Vic both, uh, with drop shots. Uh, it, it's it's really good, and it's hard to actually pitch it under a dock, but once you get it down, it, it's it's lethal. But it, Yeah, but you got to use a shorter leader. Yeah. I usually use a leader about that long yeah. on it when I fish, fish a boat dock. But that or finesse jig, you know, ball head jig, Texas rig, you know. Another good technique for a dock on this lake is is if you can skip a swim jig up under you know a, a, a dock that's real tight to the water. A lot of times you're going to get bit there. So I would say the number one bait. Think this out there for a wacky minute. worm. No, think this story. out. Think, <laughs> like, take a step back and then scratch your head like this and think about it for a minute. Think about it. Yo, know, great fire tail. What's yeah. what's spawning right now? Yeah. Brim. So why don't you throw a quarter ounce brim imitation jig, small one in there, and, and zoom that thing up under those docks? Because that's what the fish are eating. So it makes all the sense in the world to use that. And I do that a lot too during this window of the year with a little jig like that. And you will get your share of good bites. And you will catch, you can catch a good under on a, on a quarter ounce jig going up the under those docks. But it's, it's, it's going to be... Uh, uh, brim color or brim, you know, imitated brim, camo skirt type of thing. You may be a watermelon red or a watermelon candy red or something like that. Not an orange color. Any like on chatterbaits? I have not fished a chatterbait in a while. Mm -mm. But I, I've watched. I don't know how many pros fishing dogs with chatterbaits. Because yeah. you, you can. I mean, take, really, you can work a chatterbait because all it is is jig. You can work like jig under there, or you can make it work like chatterbait. So I don't know how many pros I've seen do that and pull fish off every dock with it. Well, they run those square bills, a, bur a yeah. brim color square bill by those docks also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they'll really bite that. And I know some some brought docks that have some brush that you can't see and when you run that square bill right next to that brush. I mean, I know of overs that have been caught out of that too. Uh, that stretcher bank that we fished a couple weekends ago, mm -hmm. when you were throwing the buzz bait, mm -hmm. I was throwing the chatter bait through the pads and caught a couple. You did. That's what right. stretch was that? Uh, which, which stretch the one, the one, yeah. the, the one, the, the one over right? there. <laughs> oh, oh the, the one over there. It's okay. that stretch over it's by the, one the over dam, there, guys. It's where the lily right. pads are by the dam. I'm yeah, never seeing those. Yeah, yeah, the lily pads I'm, by I'm the dam. Those. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, all right. Hey, any more questions for our uh, our two guides tonight? No. Stay hydrated, fellas. Yeah, stay yeah. hydrated. It's gonna be hot out there. Uh, get some water in the boat. Yeah. Of course. You know, Bass Champ, Skeeter tournament rules. You cannot have any sort of alcohol in the boat whatsoever, unfortunately. <laughs> Not really, unfortunately. But, um, hey, listen, I want to remind everybody, everybody here, everybody watching, uh, we've got the uh, Fish Life Forever Grateful tournament coming up in July. It's a great event. It's for a great cause. It supports um, all proceeds go to the 22 Kill uh, organization. Um which actually rolls under their their new corporate umbrella which is uh one tribe foundation so so um we're gonna have a team tournament on saturday 
um, uh, and it's going to be a 70% payout. Again, all other proceeds go to 22 kill. After weigh-in, we're going to have a, a, an auction. We've got some awesome auction items so far. We've got a two-night stay at a house on Athens with a with a free guide trip. Unfortunately, the guide trips with me, um, <laughs> no. but. Uh, but uh, we've got, uh, you know, I can look back in here. I mean, so y'all will love that. That's one. my jam right yeah. there. So we've got some custom rods, um, and one of them is a Z Dub edition custom wacky rod that's being built. Um, we've got a couple of thermal hog hunts. Man, we're gonna have some great stuff, uh, and then we're also gonna give you the opportunity to bid on fishermen that's part of our network. Cody Mays, Z Dub, Vic, um, Vic Pearsall. You know, everybody that you see on Billy's channel, on his live streams, commenting all the time. They're gonna be boat captains and you'll have a chance to bid on them and we'll just have a little fun, kind of a bragging rights MLF style tournament on Sunday. So hope to see everybody there. Um, before we close out tonight though, we've got a new segment here uh, on the Your Lake Fort Guide seminar. I think this is, I think we're just gonna call this the Billy Roast. Yeah. We got a Billy Roast going on, so. I mean, hey. Has he got the mullet yet? Uh, it, you know, it, it, he's working on the mullet, but gosh darn, look, I've got my hat here by Six Cents Fishing. It's an awesome hat. I'm going to pass this around. We're going to take a collection. And, 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 listen, I'm tired of it. Everybody else has secretly told me they're tired of it. We got to get Billy some new shorts. Those camouflage <laughs> shorts that he wears on every video, we got to do something about like that. We got to get that guy some Lulus, some, 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 some Lulu lemons, some six inch shorts. We got to do something to get this man some new shorts. Not only that, the damn shirt he always wears got holes in it. Oh That's man, look, shirt. hey, that shirt came out of his great grandmother's closet yeah. and she didn't have no mothballs in there. It was just mothed up like you wouldn't believe. That's what it looks like. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and please so. somebody buy him some 10 pound test line. <laughs> <laughs> Buy him some 10 pound test line and work work on his drag a little bit. Anybody else? Anybody else got a Billy Roast? If he could just show up on time, it'd be great. Uh, that, that's another one. If he could show up time. on time. <laughs> Billy, He's even late get, to your, get to your events on time, son. Get some new shorts. <laughs> show up to your events on time. And my goodness, get a new shirt, man. Yeah, and you know, and also, <laughs> when you invite somebody out to go bed fishing, I mean, let them try to catch some bedfish. I mean, hey, let me tell you something. You know, the worst thing in the world you can do <laughs> is go on a fun fishing day with your boy, your late for guy, Billy Lawson, <laughs> during bed season. Because it's always, hey, I'm gonna get this one, you get the next one. But when we get to the next one, but but when we get to the next one, it's a little bit bigger. It's like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna get this one, you get the next one. You know, that's what happened with that eleven pounder. I, I, but you know what? I, I, I've heard the story. I've heard the story. But y'all, y'all saw what happened last time. Old B Law caught my bed fish. I think we were down on Fairfield, and I broke off on a good bed fish while I was retying. He didn't abide by the agreement. He flipped in there and caught that breadfish. Y'all saw what happened, right? Boom! Right to the nether region. So, uh, hey, listen. We kid because we care. We love you, brother. We do. Wish you could be here tonight. We understand why you're not. Um, but, hey, last call. Any questions for our guys up here before we close it down? And please ask questions because this is probably going to be our last one because we did this roast. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Might be, last, might be the last time you see us I just wish he'd song, answer uh, his phone more than 25% of the time. <laughs> that is a valid. I have no, I don't know how many texts I have from him and it's nothing. Just me texting and then you'll get one. You'll get one. Okay. I mean, okay, get a secretary. That's, yeah, that's greatness. That's greatness. All right. Hey, uh, appreciate everybody coming out tonight for the seminar. Uh, good luck tomorrow. Use caution. Wear your PFD, PDS, PDFDs, whatever. The, the, wear your damn life jacket. All right. <laughs> um, and uh, hey, be respectful. Look, we're all in this together, right? Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, um, thanks for everybody. Thanks everybody for coming out. Thank you, David. Appreciate you, you buddy. Man. Thank you, Thank you Cody Mays. Oh, hey, look these two guys up. If Billy's not available, and, and man, they will show put you on some fish. They'll be on but, time. Yeah, they will be on time. <laughs> they will also be on time. But uh, hey, see you guys right here next time on your Lake Four Guys.